hopeless. My father's satchel. Why is it here? <laughs> Leave me alone. Notary hardened. Leave me alone. Just as soon as you show me the last will and testament of old man Van Garrett. The will leaves everything to his son. Who died with him. So the estate passes to the next of kin. Naturally. All legal and above board. Sir. I'm a dead man. No. Van Garrett's seal. Broken. Seems Van Garrett made a new will just before he died. Naming... Did a windship? And here, look. A marriage certificate. Aha. Uh -huh. Old Van Garrett secretly married the widow and left everything to her and her unborn child. So the new will stood between the Van Garrett fortune and the person who would have otherwise inherited everything. It's true. But we four were drawn in against our will. Your will? He means, of course, the four town elders. Now I see what parts you had to play. Reverend Steenwick knew the secret because he performed the marriage. Dr. Lancaster attended the pregnant woman. Magistrate Phillips gave protection of the law. And notary Hardenbrook concealed the documents which had been entrusted by Van Garrett to his faithful servant. The four conspirators drawn into the plot. We did not know it was a murdering plot. But I have not finished, sir. First, the Van Garrett's father and son slain by a horseman raised from the grave to chop heads. Now, up pops a widow with a claim on the fortune. Off with her head. But murder begets murder. It was the servant, Jonathan Masbeth. The night father and son quarreled over the new will. Jonathan Masbeth was summoned upstairs to bear witness. Here is his signature. I'm afraid it was his death warrant, young Masbeth. The horseman came for him. Came for him at the bidding of someone who had power over him. Someone who dug in the earth in the western woods and stole the skull, the missing head, which must be restored to the horseman before he will return to hell. Someone who stood to gain or lose a fortune None other than Van Garrett's next of kin, Baltus Van Tassel. <laughs> <laughs>